Rico Abreu and Spencer Baston. Bring us to the green flag in the Champion Oil Summer Nationals at Williams Grove. Rico leads the field into corner number one. Spencer based in a little higher on the racing surface. Side by side behind them for the third spot. Corey Eliason and David Gravel wheel to wheel. Eliason third as they reach turn three. First lap in the books and it belongs to Rico Abreu. David Gravel trying to catch back up with Corey Eliason in the race for the third spot. Gravel down low out of turn number two, pulls even with the Crouch Motorsports entry. David Gravel to third at the end of the backstretch. Coming with him, the number 19 of Brent Marks. Marks to the inside of Elias, but can't complete the pass there. And now Justin Peck all over Brent Marks as they enter turn one. James McFadden catching up with the 13 of Justin Peck. Peck goes to the high side, trying to drive around the outside of Corey Elias, and they'll go side by side. Justin Peck takes over the fifth spot, shuffling Elias into sixth, at least for the moment. Corey back down to the inside of the speedway in turns three and four. Marks dives to the inside, slides up the banking. Gravel crosses back underneath him, and David Gravel maintains third. Brent Marks right on his back bumper into turn one and Justin Peck gaining on both of them. Marks looking for another run on Gravel as they cross under the bridge on the backstretch. Brent Marks slides up in front of David Gravel. Gravel again able to cross back underneath him. They'll stay side by side at the end of the front stretch. David Gravel to the cushion to protect the high line from Brent Marks. Marks to the inside in turn one, slide jump! Oh, they nearly get together there, and now Gravel crosses back underneath him, and Justin Peck gonna try to come with him. Intense stuff for the third spot. Three cars out of turn number four. Justin Peck now to the inside, can't get by Brent Marks. Marks dives to the bottom in turn one, David Gravel runs the middle, and Justin Peck on the cushion. David Gravel now catching Spencer Baston. The race for the second spot. Gravel to the inside. Justin Peck and Brent Marks coming at it side by side just behind the duo of Baston and Gravel. Justin Peck fourth as they cross the line and Gravel around the outside of Baston to take second. David Gravel up to second now in court number two. Peck and Baston side by side. Justin Peck may have caught the wall slightly out of turn four. Spencer Baston maintains third. David Gravel reeling in, the man who has led the opening 19 laps here this evening. Abreu on the bottom in one and two, here comes David Gravel on the top. This time by, there will be 10 laps to go. Brent Marks and Justin Peck side by side, racing for the fourth position. Marks going to try to slide up in front of the Booth Motorsports number 13. Brent Marks now back up to fourth. They enter three and four for the 22nd time in this feature. And now David Gravel is right there. Gravel to the cushion in turn one. Rico Abreu down low. Brent Marks to the inside of Spencer based and move Marks into the third spot. Seven laps to go for your race leader. Abreu good on the bottom in one and two that time. Got a couple more car lengths on the Houston Speedway number two. Gravel works the bottom and now to the outside looking for the lead. Brilliant run down low in three and four for David Gravel. He's back to the top in one and two. Battle for the lead at Williams Grove Speedway. This time by there will be three laps to go. We saw a last lap pass for a win last night. Does it happen again this evening as David Gravel rips the cushion in one and two? Back straight away for the final time. Gravel will have to get desperate here as they race into three and four. Checkered flag in the air at Williams Grove Speedway. The Summer Nationals belongs to Rico Abreu. He goes flag to flag. As we await the winner's arrival in victory lane, Rico stopping to celebrate with the folks at Victor or, or Beer Hill, celebrating the victory on Beer Hill. Look at Rico Abreu climbing to Beer Hill to celebrate his first ever Williams Grove win.
Enrico's not even going to bother to get the helmet off. He's going to go do the full wing dance here to celebrate a $20,000 score. Yeah, that was uh, really intense there at the end. You know, you're just hard to judge your pace. I really wasn't catching traffic. Um, you know, just thankful for this team. Uh, everybody does an unbelievable job just making the right decisions. And the dash draw was, uh, you know, that was really important tonight for us and, and the way the circumstances laid out in the race. So it's, man, I'm more out from climbing the fence back there. But that was, uh, this has been a really special racetrack to me. Very difficult racetrack as a race car driver coming from the west coast out here um, just totally different driving styles it's taken me a few years to really conquer this place and put a team behind me that uh that's developed me into a mature enough driver to be successful here and we haven't ran out of the top five i think with ricky here so um just shows um you know how important your team is and i just got to thank my curve rich Staddlehofer, chris and sarah weiser um you know they the, all these people marty and misty mellow um you know, El Bandito Tequila came on board this year and Whiskey Myers for the Crown Jewel events. We got to get them on for uh, National Open now. Um, just how much this event's grown and how important it is for these partners uh, to be standing here in Victory Lane with us. I know they're watching. So, um, you know, it's just, man, these, uh, you know, you put together these teams and it comes down to the guys that work on this car. And it's, uh, they're very, very important people to me. And, um, you know, I know my family's at home watching, but I know how much it means to them to be able to see us have success and um, the investment and time it takes to, to get a team at the, to the elite level like this to compete against uh, the World of Outlaws, the Pennsylvania Posse. Um, you know, they're all here this weekend. So uh, you, you just see guys get off in strides. And I felt like we were off for a couple of weeks and then we got through and, um, you know, everything building up to the Kings Royal and the Million, you know, just kind of drained me out for a few days. And we took a few days off a of race in which we have the luxury to do uh, not chasing any championships so um you know it's just it's important for us to regroup and get back and um you know just unbelievable race car i passed the lap traffic at the right time i felt and um you know the pace of the race changed and uh you know i, I knew gravel was pressuring me there the whole race so it's just it's very uh, you have to be very very disciplined as a race car driver when you get put in those circumstances uh you know and and you know there's pressure but you know you get out of the groove and you, and you lose a, a pass and and that's the race winning move so um, you know, it's, it's, uh, you know, I knew nobody was going to drive around me because I really, really struggled getting around lap traffic. And once I moved down my car and I just had to get it rotate to create a little bit of lateral grip for me. And, uh, it was, it, my car was unbelievable tonight. I've always said, I watched Fred Raymer do it when he won the national open. I had a lot of respect for that. And I've always said, if I ever were to win a race here, I was making to make sure to stop over there. And those, um, you know, those race fans don't get a whole lot of love when it comes to victory lane. So it was important for me to stop over there and, uh, and try to rowdy him up. For live coverage of every World of Outlaws event and for extended on-demand race content, visit dirtvision.com. For full race results, features, and series news, visit worldofoutlaws.com.